Good morning and blessings to all of God's people. And whether you think you are one of those or not, God cares about you. Blessings come to you this day in Jesus' name. Reminder of uh, staying in touch. Uh, I hope you all are uh, comfortable with, familiar with just going to the church website as a starting place for a variety of uh, information and links to uh, this service, to the Wednesday evening service for Holy Communion, the Tuesday morning uh, Bible study, other groups uh, that are meeting, uh, tomorrow a women's book club. Uh, you can find out about that and everything else uh, on the website there. Uh, the other piece on Sunday is at noon for our youth group uh, having a Zoom meeting uh, together here. Uh, if uh, we don't have your email address, I, I hope we have everybody who, who wishes us to have it at this point. Um, that gives you all sorts of information. Every Thursday you'll get updates on what's coming up, links to uh, uh, that evening's uh, service or, or, or for today's uh, service uh, as well here. Oh, a special piece coming up. Um, just about three weeks, uh, three weeks from yesterday, October 3rd, it's a Saturday, um, Blessing of the Animals. So please look ahead to that. Uh, I've already gotten uh, two responses from people who are looking forward uh, uh, to that, uh, bringing special uh, uh, friends of theirs, uh, animals, uh, along to that service. 11 o'clock in the morning, it's a drive-through thing. So you'll enter uh, over here at the Northwest uh, entrance to the church. Uh, again, if you go to the announcements website, you'll see a map there with big arrows on it. You'll just drive through and the pastors will do a blessing from uh, 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 some feet away uh, as the, uh, you and your um, animal friends stay in the, in the vehicle for that. But looking forward to that October 3rd. Let's pray. Lord, your world is scary. Has been for some time. Now we've had added to it the, the things to oh, be uncomfortable with, be where oh, the fires on the West Coast, where thousands and tens of thousands, actually hundreds of thousands of people have had to evacuate their homes, and thousands of people have lost their homes, people have died, and everybody on the West Coast is told to stay inside, to protect themselves from all of the smoke and what that does to our lungs and making us more susceptible to other problems, etc. Oh Lord, thank you for those who are fighting the fire, keep them safe, and all those who have lost so much, pick them up. Pick them up and hold them, Lord. They are your people. Care for our world and all of the other things in it that we have messed up so badly. Give us your forgiveness, Lord, and lots of tomorrows. We don't deserve them, but your grace is huge. Thank you for caring for us. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now we hear from our loving God. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. Uh, today, our theme is forgiveness. And our first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 50, starting from verses 15 through 21. Let me see if you can pick some themes of forgiveness through our readings today. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Said to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell before, before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. I'm in the place, am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he's doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. A second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. From Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but do not but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on the servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day for to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all, the, let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again. So that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment? on your brother or sister, or you, who do you despise? Why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it's written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. <laughs>
our gospel reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished, who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife, children, and all his possessions, and payment be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his, slave, his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. She do not have, mercy, have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you. And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord.
Thank you so much, Joseph and Dr. David, Queen and Lanier. I mean, the music was great this morning and still is great. Thank you so very much for using your talent and gifts to worship God. This morning and this week, um, we celebrate 65 years of Prince of Peace since our inception. I don't know if many of you have already wrapped your gifts, but I hope I can suggest what you can put in there. But God has given us a gift in our church. 65 years ago, this congregation started. And 65 years later, it's still going strong. We are grateful for the women and men that over the years have worked so hard for us to have a place to belong, a family to belong, and a place to worship God. Also this week we remembered the attacks of our, on our nation 19 years ago on September 11. And I want us to continue to pray for our country. Our nation needs to heal. We need to pray that God will bring us together. Uh, even in these tough times, we are dealing with a pandemic civil unrest, now the wildfires, and all that coupled with all the partisan politics and the divide that is going on. We need prayer. We need God to heal us. We need forgiveness to be real in our day. Today, we are talking about forgiveness. You know, forgiveness is a very broad topic, and I don't think I can exhaust it in 12 minutes that I, I will have to deliver someone this morning, but I'll try my best. You know, our eternity, our eternal life is dependent on forgiveness. We are forgiven by the Lord of all our debt, of all our sin through the sacrifice of our Savior. You know, when I was preparing to speak about forgiveness, the first place I went to was the dictionary because I did not know what English words I was going to use to define what forgiveness is. And this is the definition I found in the dictionary. The dictionary defines to forgive as to stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an offense, flaw, or a mistake. And they added something that psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Forgiveness is not just needed today or is not just talked about today. In our gospel lesson that we just had this morning, Peter came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? Seven times? You know, around the first century, the rabbis and the rabbinical law required that if someone wrongs you, you forgive them three times. So Peter comes to Jesus and asks him, should I forgive them seven times? 
In other words, by saying seven times, Peter was going way beyond what the rabbis required. I'm not sure, you know, if many of us appreciate Peter the way we should, because Peter most times speaks for us. This was a time, if you read earlier on in the text, when Peter just identified Christ as the Messiah. He was excited. So in talking about forgiveness, he's excited to tell Jesus, should I do seven times more than what the rabbis say? I probably expected Jesus to give him a high five and say, yes, Peter, you did it. You get it. But Jesus said, no, not seven times. Jesus said to Peter, 77 times. Or if you read a different version from what we read today, 70 times 70. And of course, we know for sure Jesus wasn't telling Peter that go get a black book or a folder, list all the names of your friends or people you come across, and every time they wrong you, you put a tally there and count until 77 or 490, depending on what version of the scriptures you read. But what Jesus was telling Peter is that forgive all the time. Don't worry about counting. It's not about the tallies you take, how often you've been hurt. But every time you get hurt, forgive. Every time they wrong you, forgive. Now, I don't know about you, but it's, it's a tough one for me. I know I've been wronged many times, and I've found it so hard to forgive. And some of us are going through a lot of pain at the hands of those who we call friends today. And it's time, I mean, it's hard to forgive. There's a lot of bitterness, a lot of anger out there. There's a lot of blaming going around. In the past week, I was talking with a friend about this very topic, forgiveness. And he turned to me and he said, Sam, do you think there's, you know, there's people that forgive all the time? Are there still angels out there? And when he asked me about angels, without hesitation, I turned to him and told him, you know what, I do believe in angels. I know they really exist because I'm married to one. And I could not believe when he turned to me with his eyes up, you know, like starting to enlarge and almost getting out of his skull. But I told him, yeah. Because I do not know how many times I've wronged my wife and she turns and she says, forget it, I forgive. So I told him, you know, it's tough. But there still are people, especially us. That's why Peter was asking this question. Should we forgive? How many times should we forgive? It's not a question of whether you're going to forgive, but how many times do you forgive? So we know it's expected, but sometimes it's hard to walk the talk. And forgiveness can ruin our individual lives, but also our families. In our Old Testament text this morning, we just read about a family that was so dysfunctional we see the sons of Jacob. If you don't know who Jacob is, Jacob is Abraham's grandson. 
who stole his brother's birthright. Now his sons turned on their brother, their youngest brother. They beat him up, put him in a pit, and they were about to kill him when they saw these you know, slave merchants from Egypt. They took him out of the pit and sold him as a slave to Egypt. And the merchants took him over to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar. And then when he was there, the young man went through untold pain. He was framed by Potiphar's wife. He ended up in prison, incarcerated for the crimes he never committed. He was hated by his family for the dreams he had. He had done no wrong to them. So Joseph goes through this unspoken pain and mistreatment, but yet rises up to become a prime minister in a foreign land. When he was in prison, Pharaoh heard about him. And he brings him into his palace to interpret dreams. A long story short, Pharaoh puts him in charge of all the food and all the agriculture and makes him second in command. And there was a great famine that drove his brother to Egypt. And when we catch the story where we are today, or what we read today, Joseph has gone through the famine. His father has come to Egypt. He has saved his family. He forgave them from his heart. And his father had just died, and he, they had gone and buried him. And now they were back. So his brothers were scared. They were concerned that Joseph might revenge for the ills and the wrongs they did to him. But when they came to him, as a matter of fact, from the text we read, they told him that, you know, your father, before he died, he told you to forgive us for what we did to you. You know, Joseph wept. And so did his brothers. And he told them, you know what? What you intended for evil, God turned it out for your own good. Don't worry about it. I've already forgiven from my heart. God has used that action to preserve a numerous people. You know, I pray every single day that our nation, in our nation, will have so many Josephs, people that can forgive and forget. Not forget, because sometimes forgiving is not forgetting, but forgive. How nice would it be? So why do we forgive? Why is Peter asking this question? We, we hear from our gospel lesson this morning how Jesus tells a parable about this king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And one owed him 10,000 talents. They brought him to him. He could not pay it. The Lord ordered that his wife, his family, his everything, his possessions be sold to recover the debt. And the slave pleads with his Lord. He fell on his knees and asked for patience. And his Lord, out of pity, out of mercy, the Lord released him from all his debt and forgave it. And yet that same slave he goes out, as he goes out, he meets a slave who owed him a hundred denarii. 
and he got him by the throat. He said, you must pay what you owe me. And the fellow slave, just like this slave did to his Lord, the slave falls on his knees and pleads for patience. But this slave could not have it. He refused. He threw him into prison until he would pay. What happened here? The forgiven could not forgive. You know, to put in perspective what this parable talks about, the 10 talents or 10,000 talents, probably if we could bring it to our modern terms, a talent was more like a 20 year works pay. Pay for 20 years was a talent. In today's terms, it would be equivalent to about 1.3 to 1.5 million dollars. Now, 10,000 talents. This guy owed about 13 to 15 billion dollars with a B. Now, this is a lot of money. It's beyond repayment. Just imagine the interest on that. This guy was not in a position, in no way, even today, if you had this kind of debt to pay. And that's why the Lord had mercy on him. He looked at him with pity and forgave it to him, forgave him the debt. Now, on the other hand, Comparing the denarii with the talent, there is about 6,000 denarii in a talent. And this slave owed him only 100 denarii. A denarii was almost like a day's work, a pay for a day's work. So 100 denarii would translate to about 100 days of pay. A hundred a pay for a hundred days, or about twenty thousand dollars. So somebody who has been forgiven billions of dollars could not forgive somebody who owed him twenty thousand dollars. I don't know if it rings a bell in your ears, but this sounds like what we are going in or what we are going through today. You know, we know there's a lot of people that have been forgiven much. And that's why there's a little bit of a class war in this country. We hear politicians talk about it. You give billions to so and so, but take the little that the poor have. Why is Jesus telling this story? And by the way, this is not socialism. Just saying. The Lord, out of his mercy, forgave the dead. I believe that our nation could use a little mercy and forgiveness. And like I mentioned earlier on, this is a question Peter asked about people in church. And Jesus uses this parable to remind us, not the people outside of church, but the people in church. Because it's us who have been forgiven so much. The Lord has forgiven us so much. And he expects us to forgive those who trespass against us. As Christians, the lesson we learn from this parable is that our sins, what we owe to the Lord was beyond repayment. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. We were supposed to pay for our sins by death. And lo and behold, our Lord, the Son of God, 
came and took our place. He paid that date when he hung on that cross. He hung on that cross in agony, in pain, crying to his father, why have you forsaken me? If possible, take this cup away from me. That was a heavy pain, a heavy price to pay for you and me and for our sins. But God forgave through his mercy, through his grace. And when Jesus was breathing his life, he said, it's finished. That is a financial term that means that all your debt has been paid. God has canceled all our debt towards him through what Christ did for us on that cross. And it's imperative that we as Christians, when we experience God's grace, we should be, be transformed by that grace so that we can, in turn, have grace and mercy on others. We should quickly realize that the offenses committed against us by others are very small in comparison to what we had done to our God. And I know it's indeed painful when we go through hearts of those who hurt us but we have hurt God more. Sometimes we don't realize that. And we have been forgiven, especially we Christians, at the font of baptism. So as forgiven and baptized children of God, I want to encourage you this morning to reflect on what the Lord has done for each one of us. And let us do for each other. You know, does forgiveness mean enduring abuse? This morning I'm not saying that if you forgive, you should put yourself more in the same position to be abused and hurt again. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. I've talked to lots of people, especially women, that have been abused and so many of them have gone back to their abusers because they were thought they were forgiving them that way. Forgiveness does not mean that you place yourself in a position to be abused over and over and over again. May the Lord forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. May God help us to love each other and to be a neighbor among neighbors as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us sing together.
Let us pray. Drawn together in God's compassion, we pray for the church, the world, all those in need. The heights of heaven show us the vastness of your steadfast love, O God. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Free, free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver those who are bound by debt. Feed those who are hungry and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, forgive, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who hunger or thirst, for those who doubt or are terrified, for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and for caregivers that all experience the healing and comfort given through Christ. Especially we pray for Carolyn Wesson, Sig Scartland, Phyllis Bowman, Susan Merrick, Bonalyn Henderson, Rhonda Smith, Janet Schneider, Claude Wesson, June Brady, Dennis Short, Betsy Pullman, Barb Atkinson, Lori Ramsey, Margie Scartland, Chris Schneider, Arnie Walter, John Gilbert, Brady Schweitzer, Bryson Hauser, Sharman Toma, Sherry Giles. And now we also bring before you these persons whose names we share out, out loud or hold in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's pray together as Jesus called us to do. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Dream of 